blessing saints and our topic for tonight is on john 12 glory to god the corn of the wheat glory be to god when mary fell to jesus feet and poured ointment over his feet judas thought it was a horrible waste he never understood that in losing ourselves we gain in giving to christ we are blessed when we deny ourselves we truly win this is the mystery of the christian's life it is also the mystery of christ himself christ wouldn't go any further into his suffering and death without explaining this mystery in the picture of the corn of wheat it falls into the ground and dies so that it brings forth fruit hallelujah mary giving love by pouring ointment on jesus feet yes besides reminding us of the raising of lazarus and the upcoming passover in john 12 open with a picture of the savior between mary and believing and loving disciples and judas the thief and betrayer john paints the picture with brilliant strokes of contrast christ was eating with lazarus newly raised from the dead while the religious ruler consult together to kill Lazarus, glory be to God, as Christ already said, they have come clearly to steal, kill, and to destroy. Hallelujah. While Christ has come to give life and that abundantly, John 10, verse 10, Christ defended Mary against Judas, showing her affection as preparation for his burial mary realized that he who had taken lazarus out of the tomb would take lazarus place in the tomb but she didn't wait until the savior's death before she anointed him of all those who had followed christ she she seems to have been the only one who truly understood the affection, the significance of Christ's death before the fact she had truly sat at the feet of Jesus and learned the one thing needful. Luke 10 verse 39 to 42. Hallelujah. Let her alone, the Savior defended his child against the harsh treatment of judas this picture of mary christ and julia is in a sense a picture of how the true people of god lives in this world they are devoted to their lord they give him their all while the world and false disciples fail to understand this true love of god and people hallelujah and ridicule it glory be to god christ lowly reign christ explained what mary was doing and the next scripture would explain what Christ was doing when he came riding into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey to the to the Hosanna cries of the people after Christ was glorified the disciples remember that scripture had prophesied in jeremiah and in zechariah 9 verse 9 fear not daughter of zion behold the king cometh sitting on an ass court glory be to the lamb of god 
Christ is the king, but not a king like many expected or wanted. He would not ride into Jerusalem in a chariot be behind a military horse, indicating that his rule will be through sword and spears, military conquest and bloodshed. He is a king but his reign would be a reign of grace and righteousness of service and sacrifice in fact even christ's enemies were forced to admit this in verse 19 the pharisees therefore said among themselves receive ye oh he reveals nothing Behold, the world is gone after him. This is the powerful premonition, premonition that Christ's victory is sure. Hallelujah. Another powerful sign lies in the face and the fact that Greeks or Gentiles are asking to see Jesus approaching Philip they made a simple but beautiful request sir would you see Jesus we might wonder what glory there would be in a few stranger asking to see Jesus it is a sign of his sure victory yet only to faith Christ giving love to all humans appearance Christ's reign of grace was coming to a premature and sad end it looked like Christ was being judged and that his cause was lost it sincerely doesn't look like what he described was happening no is the judgment of this world no shall the prince of this world be cast out and i if i be lifted up from the earth will draw all men not some all man, men unto me unto christ hallelujah in other words saints rather than jesus being judged the world and satan were being judged they were judging themselves unworthy of the eternal life he is bringing they thought they were in the judgment seat over christ but they were really condemning themselves by rejecting him yes he would die but there would be fruit from his death because the word of god says saints we will do greater things so there will be fruit from his death. They had no anointing for their burial and no fruit in their death. But the opposite was true of Christ. Like a corn of wheat, he would fall into the ground and die. Listen, oh, to how he said it, saints. The hour is come that the son of man should be glorified verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit fruit of the spirit it is true there is a deep feeling of anguish saints and trouble in the soul of Christ and yet an unrelently willingness and gladness to do what the father had asked him to do Christ revealed to us the second of truth disciples he that loveth his life shall lose it and he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal god's people may not run away from their task even if it means sacrifice and trouble upon christ announcement of his 
fruitful that people heard what they thought was under was thunder it was instead a voice from heaven in answer to the prayers of Christ to the Father that he would glorify his name hallelujah then came there's a voice from heaven saying I have both glorified it and will glorify it again Christ explained what the voice is saying hallelujah to put it in our own words saints world watch out I say again world watch out Satan your judgment bell has told Christ will be lifted up and glorified in his death people from all nations will come to see him death will be a portal to true life for here is the resurrection and the life glory be to the lamb of god an invitation to the light in the last section of this chapter john joins two ideas we understand to be in conflict god's sovereignty and the human responsibility it is heard to understand how god blinds people eyes so that they don't see and thus cannot understand and be converted only some can see and hear it hallelujah what the lord is saying in this season god however doesn't ask us to understand he tell it to us to explain that when we do believe it is his works we have not made that difference ourselves he has shined into our hearts we need to follow god's call to walk in the light even when others refuse to as abraham did hallelujah and rahab as well god's power in their lives was great and what testimonies god made them when others do not live believe we need to simply live believe or live that to god leave it to god who is ruling over all hallelujah the order of light the order of light and darkness day and night as a purpose in our world when there is light we need to make us of the light it is as if christ is saying don't just imagine that it will always be there believe the light benefit from the light while it shines seek the lord while he may be found he is the light of this world saints hallelujah in the life of god's children there are period of light and darkness we are the we are to drink in all the rays of the sun when we can sow when excuse me when we can sow that when the darkness comes our heart will still shine glory be to god god call us to believe on the light without questioning believe without seeing that's what isaiah did way back in his days one once okay on one occasion he saw the lord high and lifted up isaiah 6 1 to 2 john refers to this in verse 41 of our chapter <coughs> he saw his glory and speak of him however there was also a time when he said and i will wait upon the lord that hideth his face from the house of jacob and i will look for him isaiah 8 verse 17 
the great difference between God's children and the children of the world can be put like this. The children of the world don't look for God's God even in the light. God's children look for God even in the darkness. Wow. Jesus. I repeat. <clears throat> the children of the world do not look for God even in the light. But the children of God look for him even in the darkness. Oh, glory be to God. And we will close here, saints. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I come just now to say thank you, O King. You're not just a part of my life, but you're my everything. Your love reaches way down deep within. Passes human understanding. There will always be a song for you I'll sing. One words just can't express my heart's desire. Gratitude for one more day my need supplies. Your warm embrace and tenderness, patient with me through all my mess. I come to one conclusion, you are the best. Saints, I love you with the love of Christ. In Jesus, the redeeming king, the bread of life. 
Hallelujah. Loves you first. When man fails, God will never fail. Today I was reminded that when your back is against the wall, the wall, God will always, always be with us. That was my reminder today. The Lord will never leave nor forsake when everyone else leaves. Hallelujah. So that was my reminder today. Glory be to God. The Lord will never leave nor forsake us. He will be with us until the very end. And I got emotional. Hallelujah. Saints walk right and drive safe. Tell someone about God. Remember to read a chapter a day. Pray. Hallelujah. You might can't help the world, but help just one. Tis the season to be jolly. Hallelujah. Maybe for some, but not for all. So help someone today. I love you. Shalom.